Hello, everybody. Welcome on in to Saving Throw Show's RPG Exploration Society. Uh, we are doing a, a little special thing tonight. Uh, we, we were missing a few folks for our, our Dark Souls RPG. So we thought, hey, why don't we do not waste this time slot and this opportunity and uh, do a little Q&A session uh, with one of the designers of Dark Souls so we could have everyone here and talk and you can we can ask our questions, you can ask your questions. So uh, that is what we are doing here. So before we get uh, started with anything, let's go around and, and introduce ourselves. Uh, we'll start off with the designer, <laughs> who the, probably the most important person, the person who has all the answers. <laughs> that, is a, that is a heavy burden to bear. Uh, this is early <laughs> in the episode. Hi, I'm, I'm Richard August. I, I am the, the lead designer of RPGs at Steamforge Games. I'm one of the, the lead designers on, on Dark Souls. I'd just like to apologize, one, for my voice, I've been a bit unwell, and two, uh, I have my, my laptop very precariously balanced <laughs> in order to get anything like the light. So if it suddenly f tumbles off and crashes, that that's on me, I'm sorry. <laughs> very fair, very fair. Uh, and we also have two of our cast members from, uh, from the Dark Souls RPG. Uh, please introduce yourselves. Jack, you go first. Me? Okay, hi. <laughs> I'm Jack Culture Clinics. I use he, they pronouns. Um, I'm a teacher RPG former, big Dark Souls fan, and I guess now big Dark Souls teacher RPG fan. <laughs> um, I'm, I've been reading through this a lot, and I'm very excited to play um, play an awful, awful person um, <laughs> named Stitches. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm Stokes. I'm Cassie. Uh, you can also call me Bravo. Um, I'm also a TTRPG streamer and um, writer. Um, I uh, make battle maps every single month over at my Patreon. Um, if you're a DM, you're like, ah, oh, shoot, I didn't prepare today. I guess I'll throw them into a dungeon. I make those for you. Easy peasy. Um, and I uh, love Dark Souls as well. Um, I'm definitely a recent, like a very brand new Dark Souls fan. Um, but oh, I have been dying for like a Dark Souls TTRPG. <laughs> At first, I was like, I'm just gonna have to like use the flavor, and I guess I'll make it in Five E. And then I was like, Oh my gosh, now hold on a second. Well, someone this? already did the work for you. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> is, Cassie and I, I think Cassie was streaming at the time, and we were like. It'd be really fucking cool if we could have like a tea, Dark Souls teach RPG. We should yes. like make one. And yeah. then two weeks later, it can see what came out. It, I remember being head. like, oh man, I would love to do that. I don't want to put the work into that. <laughs> I'm already in college. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already writing enough. I was like, someday. And then oh, a gift from the heavens. It was like, oh yes. And then Drax's like, do you want to? Do you want to be? Do you want to play? Dark Souls TTRPG with me? I was like, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> so I'm so excited. I cannot wait to play. I'm yeah. just, just biting at the bit to play. I'm so excited. I think we're all on the same page here. Uh, but yeah, for those of you who are turning in, tuning in live, uh, feel free. You can uh, ask your questions in chat. Uh, we will have our producers and moderators sort through them and get them to us so that we can ask them on your behalf so that you can get your burning Dark Souls TTRPG questions answered. Uh, but hey, for everyone watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Um, you could do us a solid and maybe like and comment, uh, hit the, the the subscribe or whatever, you know, the bell, all that, all that good stuff. Uh, it helps the sh promote the show and all the other past years and years, nearly a decade of RPGs we have on our channel. Lots of, wow. lots of, lots of flavors of RPGs on there. Uh, and if you'd like to support the channel, uh, you can do through the typical means, or you can always go to our, our coffee page, which is uh, exclamation point co C k-o-f-i uh in the chat which uh goes to the kofi page you, you can you can tip regularly like you would do any other way like through twitch uh but you can also join the exploration society uh, uh for uh a monthly amount which gets you some the same rewards as patreon plus unlocks uh new things like tips uh and toasts and all that stuff in further shows but without further ado let's talk dark souls we got Woo! burning questions about dark souls ask away uh, yeah, ask away. Uh, I've been do doing a lot of talking up uh, front, so I'll let uh, the two of you ask a question first before we get uh, Okay, I have a yeah. question. What, I think, what was the biggest hurdle? I, I would imagine that the biggest hurdle would be that idea of, uh, as you say in the game, position. 
like taking into account like the stamina and the FP and the HP and how they all kind of play with each other. Um, that would be my guess, but I'm so curious, like what was the biggest hurdle of taking a very soul specific mechanic and turning it into or using it in a TTRPG? So yeah, that that was definitely one of them. One of the main things was making the game feel deadly enough because obviously in 5e usually you're you're pretty rugged. You know, even mm-hmm. at, even at first level, compared to say earlier editions of D and D, you're fairly resilient. You're good. You know, you know, you can take a few hits, even right. if it's only from kobolds and goblins. Whereas in you know, in, in Dark Souls, you can get hacked to pieces by a, a, a evil looking thing in the first seconds if you play like yeah. a fool. And making that feel, making that that feeling of um, vulnerability in a 5e basis was was quite difficult. So one of the ways we'd managed to do that was capping position. And then obviously encouraging people to spend position only to make themselves weaker is kind of, it's a very Dark Souls um, balance. You know, it's a thing you have to, I think it it encourages mastery and also um, it it made my life a bit easier because once you can encourage people to spend things, uh, it becomes a lot easier for them to kill themselves for you. (laughs) I... I was just gonna say, because I know me as a Souls player, my number one problem that I always run, like that thing that you have to fix in yourself is like, <laughs> oh, you get hungry. You're like, I have enough stamina to hit this guy one more, one time, more time and that's all it needs. And you get too hungry and that's where you just like throw like 30 minutes of prep away all of a sudden. <laughs> and so I'm so, I'm so excited to see that be a thing. And it's like, it's like, like I applaud you. That takes like that takes an insane amount of like design, like brain work to like translate that from a medium where it's very easy to implement to a medium where you gotta like put it on pen and paper. It's really, really awesome. I'm so excited. I don't know if you tell. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> you. I, I should definitely um one of the, the kind of originators of the system was Matt Matt Hart, who's my co designer and, and the, the chief creative officer at Steamforge. That was uh, something he'd been toying with for a long time and i had so there was two different versions in my original version you could spend initiative which just moved you down in the order so you'd, you'd end up and it was him uh who was the idea of well what if we turn this into you know you're spending your hit points and you it makes it deadlier it makes it more authentically souls i think and also it means that as a player you really have to burrow into the kind of depths of what your different abilities do and how you can make them work with other players. So it, at the same time, it makes you feel like you're in Dark Souls, but it also means that you we kind of mechanically incentivize people talking to each other at the table and saying, well, if I can do this, can you do this off that? And, you know, actually makes you want to, you know, work out the combos and work out the different ways of working together, which, you know, uh, given that's not the normal way of playing Dark Souls was an important thing we wanted to, to build in there. Yeah, I love that. And I love I, I love pos- positioning in replace of health points, because I feel like health points in D&D, like in, in, in most RPGs in general, are like, oh, I got shot with an arrow, you lose a little life because it hurt you. When it, like, the actuality, it's supposed to be like your ability to continue to fight. So the, the idea that like I'm using my ability to fight in order to like fuel my magic or whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, they, it, I'm, it you know I still once like most people you stab them once and they're dead anyways even, <laughs> so. <laughs> it was uh, well, yeah that's exactly what we wanted to capture because there's that, always that that age old debate of what what is what is hit points actually measuring is it measuring how many times you can get hit and how much damage you can take is it. Is it a kind of combination of things? Is it the look? You know, sometimes, all right, you've lost some position, you've lost some hit points rather, but that's that's more, you know, just the, the flow of battle and your ability to carry on, you know, right. participating. Um, and in this, we kind of solved it by going, no, this is it's a combination of your your health and your stamina and where you are in the fight and what you're able to do. Um, so, so it was kind of cool to be able to clarify that. Also, I mean, we went, we had so many different names for it over the time. Until we eventually just went, no, we're, we're gonna, we're just, we're calling it position. We're sticking with that. We're not going with, you know, uh, any of the nonsense ones I came up with, which I unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately forgotten. But I know those really, really, really bad ones in there that I'm, I'm not going to uh, sully people's ears with. <laughs> oh. you know, I definitely want to touch back on the combo idea as well because I think 
I am a huge like superhero and anime fan, fan and one of the key things that with those genres is like team up and like special combo moves and it's very it's not like it's hard to do because it is possible to do with the original D and D five E but I guess it's not as um, encouraged or really like pointed out that you can even do that kind of stuff in the game but having uh, the Dark Souls TTRPG essentially promote speaking and teaming up and thinking of ways to combo your different abilities is just beautiful to me because it makes for great cinematic moments that are also mechanically in-game very helpful and useful as well so you never have to really give up like mechanics for flavor or flavor for mechanics or vice versa anything like that so yeah no i i love that you leaned into the combos um and encouraging that and also just i love the yeah it's one of the <laughs> we all jumped on the saddle we were all so pumped <laughs> all so excited Oh no, now what? Uh, <laughs> do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Off, okay, so. yeah, so, yeah, I think one of the temptations with, with Dark Souls was because, you know, the, the, the game is in so many ways focused on, on the solo play, or certainly that's how many people perceive it, because, I mean, obviously, the, you know, calling assistance in and calling people to help you, etc., or getting raided is a big is a big part of the game. It's, it's I think it's mm -hmm. more multiplayer than, than is often remembered because the core experience is so intensely personal um but i think you either go all right well we're making a solo game or you have to make the the multiplayer game feel really valuable and you know make people around the table really kind of engage with each other so that was something we, we definitely wanted to, to to make work um as well as you know as positively as we could and you know, if you can make people do fastball specials and other great combinations, <laughs> that's that's also the good. I think. Um, I mean, I'm sh there are definitely some broken things in there. But then, you know, some of the bosses you're going to be up against, you're going to need broken things. You are because yeah, yeah. when you're we're trying to beat a boss with 900 position, of which there's at least two in the book, you you need. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And they can spend that like players. So they're for the first kind of half of a fight, they're never going to miss you, they're ever. They'll just they'll hit you every single time. So just make oh, sure you no. know. I'm you so excited. <laughs> I know it's gonna. I know it's gonna destroy me, but I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. I love that idea of like that break off. That another thing that like sets souls aside from other kind of like RPGs as well as setting. A Dark Souls setting away from a 5e setting is like 5e really kind of discourages the idea of metagaming um but souls in Dark Souls like metagaming is like nearly like this like little thing you gotta have in your pocket you like learn and there's like a community that like is like oh like of course you know like the second Vort does this one keyframe like you gotta go over there <laughs> it's like there's this idea and then I love then that like you're encouraging your friends at the table to like talk to each other and be like, okay, well, when he does this one thing that I know he's eventually gonna do, gotta go over here. And I think that's like, cause that's always been one of my favorite things about Souls games. And I'm so excited to see it, like be able to play it in person, in real life. <laughs> uh, I hope, I hope it, I hope it works. That's, it's, it was definitely a, a tiny, you know, the intention was to make it work like that. And cause I mean, yeah, every, everybody better games, even if it's in the, the smallest possible yeah. way. So you might as well, I think, create a system which accounts for it. And, um, you know, it tries to, tries to make it work in the best possible way rather than yeah. ignoring it and, and, and hoping. There's no way to fight the meta gaming. There's no yeah. way. You just gotta yeah. indulge in it a little bit. But as I like, I was, uh, cause, cause my, character that i'm going to be playing is a cleric and i've been looking into healing and i just love the idea that i'm actively spending position to give other people position because that feels very souls like like i'm doing these spells i'm stuck in an animation i can't move i'm very vulnerable uh, and then i'm helping yes. everyone else oh, oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> i think we lost oh, richard no. he lost position <laughs> Richard gave up his position. It happens sometimes. It's understandable. Yeah. I I think that's also something I'm very excited to see 
I just, I think I'm, personally me, Cassie, is itching for something other than 5e to play right now. And especially with Elden Ring coming out, like, right now, um, I'm itching for something like that. And I think another thing that I love so much about Dark Souls is its environmental storytelling. And so I'm eager to see what the plot lines and the NPCs and all that is going to look like in a TTRPG setting. I think also as like a DM, I'm very excited to be running this game. Yeah. I can't wait. Are you going to run it? Oh my god. Okay. I have to. How can I, I mean, not? Yeah, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. I've been waiting for this for years. I'm so pumped. Yeah. I was told off stream that you are just the best at one shot. So I have to. I don't know. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, my friend loves Bloodborne, and he's like, for my birthday, would you consider running, like, a Bloodborne-esque game? And I was like, you know, like, I could do it aesthetically, but there's no real system that would kind of match the vibe. And it's as if divine intervention happened, like, <laughs> this beautiful gift was graced onto the world. Very excited. Um, Is there right. rolling? I Is do, there rolling I... in this game? Uh, oh, you mean like rolling it and dodging? Dodging yeah. it on the way. I think you can, just can I fat roll? That could be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that Ugh. there is, but I imagine we're the, the idea is <laughs> that you're using the equivalent. your equivalent. Yeah, because you get you get hit. You're not losing health. You're losing position. So maybe that's right. you rolling out of the way or whatever. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. See. Yeah. They they already thought about all of this. They I'm sure. They already thought of it. Yeah, ditching HP definitely like opens up narratively what you can say yeah. when you lose HP, which I think is great. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking one of my the things that the cleric starts with is uh, I've got a bell that I can ring that costs me two position, but but gives one position to like a couple of allies or something like that. And I was like Ooh. mechanically like that's great, but also it's like. I'm, I just start ringing a bell and whatever monster, it was like, why is yeah. that thing ringing a bell? And it's more interested in attacking just me now. Standing, yeah, standing in the middle of the battlefield, like, I'm open! It's like, hey, 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 over here. Hey, hey. hey, hey. I, I have a question, and then DJ Regular also has a question. Um, uh, but while we're waiting for Richard to reconnect, uh, did you all, having all played the Dark Souls games before, as you're building your characters, have you considered um, knowing knowing what to expect from a Dark Souls game? Have you considered that with your character, like how you how you're building them? <laughs> I, I haven't. No. I base. I'd say in a, there he is. Yay! <laughs> Hello, Richard. I'd say base, I, I always base my characters off of, I build their aesthetic first before I build their, like, build. Um, and so, yeah, no, I was just very much, like, I tried to turn off that meta part of my brain, at least for character creation, and be like, I just want to make something that, if I was walking down Limgrave and I was like, there she is, <laughs> there's my character, and then whatever came after, came after. <laughs> yeah, I, I usually play, so my constant build whenever i play any souls game is um strength and endurance or maybe like maybe the second or third playthrough i go for decks um so i've never actually done spell casting so when i went with pyromancer for this so even if i knew anything like all of the spells are completely new to me um so even as a dark souls fan most of them have gone over my head entirely um <laughs> but i just realized that i'm just into chapters i enjoy spell casters that's what i'm also I'm going to be in the world I love, so I might as well just play the character that I love. Because um, I, I I feel like I'm not... When it comes to like actually playing the games, I just brute force it. <laughs> it's very little <laughs> skill, and that's very hard to do when you're a spellcaster, because a few hits and you're down. <laughs> so I've never actually played a spellcaster in the games, but now I'm going to be... going to be... Uh, an arsonist, honestly. I was gonna say, I'm I was so excited. Different, but, but yeah, he's gonna be—he's definitely an arsonist. <laughs> yeah, I think when I was making 
uh, mine. Like I, 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 I read the book a little bit before we started, and I was I just the idea of a cleric and like that it's not like a cleric in 5e and i was like oh that's interesting maybe that and then then we rolled all our memories and stuff like that and it was like this weird like like killer for hire who's now a cleric and i was like that's a super interesting idea i'll stick with that i love it i'm so i'm so pumped i love characters that get made like that like happenstance and it almost just like the dice like write a beautiful just cohesive story yeah. that even like surprises yourself I, i'm so yeah. i'm so pumped i love it yeah okay say, oh go yeah. ahead fin finish and your I, thought yeah i'll just say uh, real quick i will say that um i had the idea of like playing a character who was related to patches from the beginning and i had just <laughs> encountered patches in elden ring and he you know um spoiler he attacks you at first um oh yeah so he attacked He's me and then i think like blew like a mist at me I think it was like poison at some or something like that and i was like i need to like incorporate something similar to this um in my character so when i saw pyromancer and there's like um i think it's like equivalent of flame breath i was like that's the closest i can probably get to whatever patches did to my character um so that's why I, that's like the main reason i went for pyromancer and pyromancer at that moment other than that though it just went in kind of blind perfect um okay we have richard here for right now um, hopefully he can hear us. <laughs> um, Richard, can you hear us? Oh, can't oh, hear anything. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll work on getting Richard. So DJ regular, hold off on your, we'll hold off on your question for right now. But once we get Richard back in, um, we I have will. a question while we work. Go for it. Talk. What's everyone's favorite Dark Souls boss? Um, I just remember them as the dancer. I thought it was a beautiful um, fight. They had a, I think they had a dual swords, um, and just kind of just it was the most frustrating fight, but it was beautiful. So I didn't mind going through it multiple mm -hmm. times. Yeah, yeah, that one was that was kicks your butt. I haven't even. Yeah. I'm not even kidding you. I was in Dark Souls three. I hit Deacons of the Deep, and I said. Mama needs a break. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't keep bashing my head. And then Elden yeah. Ring came out, and I was like, okay, I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> what about you, Aaron? No, Favorite Dark Souls boss? Uh, I. It's probably it's not it's not the most interesting boss, but the 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 gargoyle in I think it's Dark Souls one, the one that's on top of the church where you have to ring the mm -hmm. bell afterwards. I just remember like that was the one I was like, oh, this is the moment when I decide if I want to keep playing this game anymore. <laughs> like I hit that, I hit that. I was like, if I either keep doing this or I don't play this game anymore. And I was like, and then I beat him, and I was like, okay, okay, I can do this. I can do this. Amazing. I love Artorias. I think. I just love, well, yeah. I love Artorias. I think I love his aesthetic. I love, I love, I think I love that Dark Souls is a game you can play surface level. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then for people who are like itching for a story and you like go look for it, it is deep. That game goes deep. The whole universe. Like, it's, I, I love it so much and I love like, I don't know. It feels like you're uncovering like secret information almost. Yeah, you know there's I mean? the, like, yeah. There's it's the kind of storytelling that I think video games do so much better than any other medium. It just mm -hmm. like the the story's there if you want to find it. Yeah, I it's like a kind of Fallout or like um, some of the Halo games are like that. You know, we were just talking about Halo in the green room, and like where like there's so much story and it goes really really deep if you want to look for it. Destiny is another great game, example. Destiny is a fantastic example. <laughs> but, but a lot exactly. of those games, you can't find that story in game. You have to go outside sources or whatever, or read mm -hmm. like like logs or something that you find and get. Same with like Resident Evil, you have to find all the computers and pieces of paper and like, stuff like that. You know. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. For, honestly, for me, because I love that kind of. I just I love having them like dangle hints in front of me and then be like, there you go, you figure out the rest yourself, or like you find the clues yourself. Cause like, I think what awakened that in me was Gravity Falls. Cause of how they would like hide like clues and ciphers and everything just in the most weirdest of places and the community it built. So finding Dark Souls, which is a much obviously incredibly darker than Gravity Falls. Mm -hmm. um, I find the Not incredibly. Was, 
I, I mean, honestly, <laughs> it is darker, but not by an incredible amount. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it's more saying something about Gravity Falls, honestly, because Gravity Falls got pretty dark, especially in the last few episodes. Um, yeah, I'm rem- remembering a very gruesome scene now. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, finding a community that's similar like to that, but I guess in gameplay and just so I can just do it on my own. I don't need to join the community if I want. If I don't really right. want to, um, yeah, no, it, it it was right down my alley. It was perfect for me. I think that's also what I love about Dark Souls is like there's a lot of, you know, backstory that you can go uncover, but sometimes all it takes is like an NPC saying like one or two lines, and I I think I love that too of like one NPC you wouldn't really think that had like such a insanely storied past like just like gives you a one liner and you're like you can see it all like their whole yeah. thing I love that I love that so much I also love like backstories on bosses that you'd never uncover until you like look back and you kind of almost feel bad a little bit about yeah. spending two hours trying to kill it but that's Dark Souls yeah. Yeah, we're we're just trying to get uh, uh, Richard's audio working here. Um, no so uh, we've I see we've got a couple of questions, <gasps> but um, we we need Richard to answer them. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> so. As I stated earlier, holds all the all the answers. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think and the the story stuff and also like the way that it tells it through gameplay as well. Like you know, you you just don't you're like. Nobody ha- there's nobody's got a, a a name plate over their head or bosses don't have like you know you don't see like health bars or exclamation points so you don't know if like oh who's this guy in, in this onion knight should I should I stab <laughs> him I stab like him? do I stab him do I talk to him what's his vibe what's his deal and I love especially I think like they've cranked it up to eleven in Elden Ring but especially with Dark Souls three for, which is my like the most recent one I replayed and um, was that like every choice matters in a way that at least for me i haven't seen in a game or at least a game like dark souls where it's like a hack seemingly like a hack and slash mm-hmm. but like like on Knight could i mean spoiler i guess on Knight could like die if depending on what you did and um, when you did it I, um, that's, that's my favorite thing in games when you are actively making choices without realizing it when it's not doesn't yeah. pause the game and go do you want to murder the village <laughs> or yeah. bake, have a bake-off and when, <laughs> When you're just like someone's like, "Hey, can you get me this thing?" and then you do, and then and then they, they use that thing to kill a bunch of people. And you're like, "Wait, what? Oh, jeez, <laughs> yeah. I'm... Yeah. am I, I the bad also, guy?" <laughs> the one thing that always frustrates me, of course, you can never change other people's play styles. You can get as mad as you want, but it's not going to change anything. And I think this also connects to tabletop games. Look, I'm sure murder hobos love what they do and love having a great time ripping through NPCs that I'm sure had lovely dialogue and stories to tell you. I know it frustrates me so much. And so like seeing people like go through Dark Souls and be like, I don't care who this is, they gotta die. It's like, <laughs> oh, you don't understand. He could have helped you. I am definitely tempted because I haven't done this before, but I kind of want to. Maybe I'll do it in Elden Ring, but just killing every NPC I come across <gasps> and just see what happens. Yeah, oh, so <laughs> that was my favorite. Uh, I remember back in the day when I was playing Morrowind, which was like just a game changer for me when I was when I was younger. Like I would just I was like, I don't like this guy. He's weird. And then I killed him. And it's like, you have doomed the world. He was a <laughs> scary NPC. Reload your save or continue playing in your doomed world. And I was like, yeah. oh, my gosh. God. I, that hit me when I played Fallout New Vegas for the first time. And when you have the option to like kill Mr. House, and I was like, this guy's old. He sucks. I was, oh like, my God. I was like, let's kill this guy. And the obituary is like, the hope for humanity is lost. I was like, you're telling me I- there are consequences in this game? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Changed everything for me. I was like, I'm going through every video game. Like everything has a life. Well, I guess we can uh, talk about uh, our characters a little bit. It's been a week now. You've had a week to ruminate on on your characters. Uh, wh- where where are you settling in terms of like who you think your character is a- at this moment? I'm I'm fairly I'm fairly confident. Like not confident. I'm certain. I'm sticking with him being Patches' <laughs> brother. I don't think they're like actually related, but I think what's going to happen like Patches and Stitches 
used to be like merchants together, like very good friends, as close as to as friends you can with someone like Patches. Um, <laughs> and and um, they they've done more, done many a crimes together, probably killed many a innocent people <laughs> together as well, um, and constantly sleep one eye open because they're fully aware that they one would probably kill the other at some point. Um, and maybe Stitch, maybe Patches did. Maybe that's why Stitch is where he is now. Maybe Ooh. Patches killed him. <gasps> um, who knows? But um, or or at least from the backstory I rolled, um, I think I got hung. So maybe maybe Patches um, ran me out of something to someone. Um, but who knows? That's only up to Gabe. Um, but yeah, no, I'm very. I know Stitch is going to be an awful, terrible person, who is hopefully so unlikable that's likable, um, like Patches. <laughs> oh my god. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Jack always knows how to make a character. I love it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've only seen Drac, or I've only ever played with Drac, and Drac kind of plays like a sweetie. That one of those <laughs> characters, this is like, oh, I could kill you eight times before you hit the ground. Uh, but I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little sweetheart. <laughs> I like you, so you're cool. That's terrifying. So I'm excited to see Drac get a little crazy. Yeah, I, I think... The only times I think we've played together, you're just kind of a short guy who likes basketball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, for anyone who knows me as a player and as a person, to be honest, I'm a very big anime fan. And that character um, heavily is heavily based on Edward Elric. Because um, yeah. whenever someone calls him short, he freaks the fuck out. Um, <laughs> and I think, I think uh, was it your character or was it um, CB's character? implied not even really said it, sure. it was probably it was probably my character because my character is just like he's not an, an incredibly intelligent person and just says things yeah and my character's flipped the fuck out um so i'd accuse him of things that he definitely didn't do as well because he just started <laughs> ramping up <laughs> amazing well I, I know for meliora i she her concept kind of stuck with me when i first her, I didn't know I was going to be on a show. I'll say it. <laughs> I thought Drac had, Drac had messed with me. He's like, you want to play Dark Souls? I was like, yeah. It's like, okay, here's the thing. He's <laughs> like, oh, okay. And so Meliora, I had kind of been like having this concept. I wanted to play someone like a caster, someone kind of spooky, gothic, like romanticism type. And then in my creative writing program, I was like, Oh, like, I'll just explore this character for this project. And I wrote this piece of what I was like, this could be her backstory. And like, just as I kept writing and writing and writing, I was like, oh, like, I have this solid, like, desperate to climb the ranks of uh, magic so much that they're going to make a pact with some evil, evil god. Um and do a couple weird experiments and make a couple little weird guys um and so i'm very very excited now that i've seen the group dynamic of everyone else's characters then you start thinking ooh, like how is she gonna feed into or pull from and all that stuff i'm very 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 excited yeah i'm also so excited for this cleric who yeah. i'm so excited <laughs> I yeah, the, after we rolled like that he was a killer for hire and that he was like killed by bandits or whatever, and then I was like, I guess he's a fencer, but I still want to be a cleric. Uh not only did I realize that that means there's a there's a one in eight chance that I spend five position to not heal anybody. Uh uh in, <laughs> which which I think is hilarious. But I just like the idea of it kind of like as I let it swirl in my head, this idea of like this person who maybe isn't a bad person but hasn't had the luxury of being able to be a good person in his <gasps> life like you like like he's like listen like i'm like he was probably born poor you know homeless like had to like steal to eat you know did all that's like you know had to live that life didn't have the luxury to be good and now has something in in him that is like allowing him to do these miracles and he's like i don't understand it i don't understand why it's me I'm not this person. <laughs> oh, I'm so close. perfect. I love that. So you're saying he's Aladdin. Kind of. <laughs> Just one kind jump of, like, ahead. It, it's kind of, I've had this idea of like a paladin that like, like 
like is like listen i'm you know i i i'm doing this because something's make like gives me the power to heal people but i don't understand it and you know i'm mostly just a guy with a sword <laughs> <gasps> oh i love I those kinds that. of characters i love that and the fact oh. that this this system i don't have to give up like because of it, it like they they change the classes you don't have to give up like he he can still be a very capable melee combatant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't have to lean one way or the other. Like you can kind of balance it out both ways. Oh, yay. I'm so stoked. I'm very Dark excited. Dark Souls. Dark Souls. I, it's another thing I definitely saw about while making stitches, or at least thinking about stitches, that I find it so fun that patches is in every Souls game. And I think that's just. I love so that. Funny. And like, and I think we like, I don't think it's established as the same patches. I think it's like meant to be like different timelines or whatever or universes. I don't know. Yeah. Cause they're all kind of like different, like this different universes from one another or yeah. right. some, to some extent. Yeah. But I just love the idea that there is like, it's the same patches that's just been moving between them and just being an, uh, just slipping in and being essentially a con artist being like, yeah, I'm also tarnished. Uh, you're probably just learning what that even meant like a couple of days ago um, yeah, man. Uh, and he had like a Trust whole story <laughs> i think oh, that no. also like allows for that really awesome meta of then you being like you motherfucker i yeah. know you <laughs> i know what you're about you can't fool me this time yeah oh, i, I love just love it. like i just can it's, it's kind of like a perfect hole in the dark souls lore where i can just insert myself and be like yeah, you just never heard of me because Patchy never talks about his past. I was yeah. always there. Um, this is a very easy I'm place canon. to put my character in. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's deep down. That's all we ever look for in our TFT RPGs to be like, I, I'm actually, yeah, I exist already. Yeah, I was already yeah. there. I was there the whole time. <laughs> you didn't look hard enough. I've been canon this entire time. <laughs> I um, uh, Richard is hopefully almost here. Um. I want to address one question, Angry Capybara. Uh, there is no unavoidable hit in Dark Souls, which is why we have no hit runs. Why did you decide to create encounters with unavoidable hits, especially a boss? I think you're thinking of Dark Souls, the video game, and not necessarily Dark Souls, the role-playing game, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, alas, we don't have the developers of Dark Souls, the video game here. Um, but... That does bring up an interesting thing, which I think you all kind of touched on a little bit, is is the, the aspect of unavoidable hits and how that your position and everything sort of plays into uh, yeah, I, the, the, I think the game. I think that plays into, yeah, definitely plays into the idea of position instead of hit points. So, like, you, you get hit and and you lose position but that doesn't mean necessarily that you got hit it just means like right. if you lose a lot of position maybe you got you had to like take you know jump way back or like like you you got knocked back and and now you're way out of position so you can't strike as hard the next time you know and that's why i think position is such a great word for it because it's like how likely you are to do something <laughs> how yeah. how in position you are to do something really amazing yeah yeah like from what I understand, position is like a combo of like stamina, um, yeah. health, and like FP. And if you you avoid a hit by running, but you use up stamina by or rolling, and you use up stamina stamina by doing that, so I guess it's exactly um, an, an avoidable hit. <gasps> Are we you alive, hear us? Richard? Hello. Yay! No, no, no you're all good. Right. No, don't worry. Okay, R Richard is here. I'm saying this for chat because chat can't see or hear Richard yet, but um, I, I am working on getting Richard into the stream, but Richard is here, so. Richard. Continue talking amongst you three, and <laughs> we'll get Richard in. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think I think that's very, like, it's a good point, because if you think about it, like, you could say you're doing a no-hit run, like, I mean... Until, yeah, and let, and until your character is, is straight up murdered. You, right. You, yeah. Technically, no hit run. I wasn't yeah. hit. I just rolled six times and disengaged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't so see Richard, the we did our We did our best to answer this question, but maybe you better to answer it more co um, co concisely and coherently. But, um, so, Angie Cap Capybara asked, um, 
as far as I know, there are no unavoidable hits in Dark Souls. That's why we have no hit runs. The question is, why did you decide to create encounters with unavoidable hits, especially at a boss? I think they were talking, probably referring to the 900 um, position <laughs> boss you mentioned <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Um, so uh, that's it's a really really good question um so there are a couple of things i think to address is that one um when you're making a, an adaptation of any existing ip you have to make certain choices and some of those come down to do you want to make something that definitely feels like um the original ip or do you want to just you know um do you want to capture and just reuse every mechanic from that game every little thing and, and i think you know, for me, it was more important that the tabletop RPG felt like Dark Souls, which is that there is that omnipresent threat. It's always there. And when you're, when you're, you know, when you have, when you have a GM there, that's very different from the computer game. It's very mm -hmm. different way. You know, you're not responding to uh, an AI that's planned out. You're responding to another human. And I think it's more threatening for that other human to have the capability to uh, hit you at any time in the way that you kind of feel like they do in the game. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, yeah, you've mapped out their rules, you know, that you're pretty sure you know what they do, but they could still hit you and one, one shot you. I wanted to capture that feeling, and I felt it was important that they there was a mechanic to do that. That being okay. said, because it's a GM, and using spending position from the bosses is an option for them. It's something they can do. They don't have to do it. And that's, you know, if, if that's, you want to try and do a no-hit run in the TTRPG, well, have a little discussion with your, your GM, say, this is how we want to go about it. We'd rather you didn't spend position for the bosses like they were player characters, and you should be fine. Um, so it's, you know, like like with any tabletop RPG, these these are, this is a toolkit, not a prescribed play experience. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, finish. Yeah, go ahead and finish that, and then uh, we'll go back to DJ Regular's question. Yeah, and I think a lot of this we because we've been talking a lot about position. I think position makes it fe the fact that position is your stamina and health makes it like I would have never thought to make those two different thing or t one thing. I would have think like you would think that like, those are two different things, but making it one thing feels somehow more Dark Souls, and I and. It just feels more Dark Souls to have that be one thing, and I'm not sure yeah. why. I love it. It's, I, I mean, it's a, I hope, yeah, that's that's always the intention is that it's what you want to capture. And I, you know, I, I totally understand why some people think, you know, maybe you should have had two different tracks or something. That for me feels like a lot of bookkeeping. Yeah, a lot yeah that's of another thing. Things off. And I, yeah, I'd rather have one thing that's doing more work than than me having to do more work with several different tracks because um, right. I'm lazy. No, <laughs> I mean, it, I think it makes sense because if you think about it, you could have all the stamina in the world or all the health in the world and the second your stamina drops because you're rolling too much, doesn't matter how much health you have if he's using that one move, you're gone. Like, I think it captures that, like you said, that Dark Souls thing very perfectly. Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, I mean... Go ahead. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if you still feel that way after a couple of seconds. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> That's right. We have yet to play, but I'm I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This question comes from DJ Regular. For a lot of Dark Souls fans, the appeal isn't dying a lot, but because you as the player will hopefully learn how to progress and improve through trial and error. With many TTRPGs, character death is the end of progression and learning for that character at least, and as a GM, I usually worry a lot about being too opaque on how a character can get past an obstacle. How does the TTRPG address that kind of enjoyment for the players and encourage the GM to support that style of play? So again, another really, really good uh, question. Um, so the first step is there is a lot of GM advice in this book because it's such a, a different uh, role-playing game experience. And that, that's true for everybody. It's true for the players and it's definitely true for the GM. So there is a, that kind of, um, that issue is addressed on the very first page of the GM advice. And it says, you are not the enemy. And it's about, it's about finding the right balance. And this won't be the same for every group. But some groups will want to die a lot because you've, you've no idea how many times I've been told that the, the the core experience of Dark Souls is dying a lot, and that you need that, and this that you need to make Five E really truly deadly. 
So that's not the same for every group. And there are rules in that chapter for tweaking the difficulty up and down. Um, death, as in Dark Souls, is definitely not the end. Yes, you will lose all your souls, but you're, you are you come back again. You're, you know, born again, if you like, at, at a bonfire, the nearest bonfire, and you get to go again. Um, you get to practice what you've learned, work on those combos again, uh, spend position differently. Maybe you hoard it this time. Maybe you go all out and you hit them really, really hard, straight up front, and then your character sits at the back while uh, supporting, while the other characters kind of grind away because you've done your bit. But it's, it's about, you know, we were talking about working together as a group, and that's one of the key things there is that you have to know how you're approaching something as a group for the gm it's about recognizing that what what is your true role here it's about creating stories it's about creating an experience for the players now part of that experience is difficulty is having to redo things over and over again but that's not all it's about it's also about you know the joy of success it's about um, finding a way through. It's about imparting weird fragments of law, little by little, and all of these filter into the GM uh, experience. And all of these have given have given quite a lot of um, time, I hope, in, in the in the GM chapter, to show GMs how you can build something that really feels like Dark Souls, without just you know going too far and turning it into a bloodbath which you know you could do because dark souls isn't necessarily about balance and certainly i think if we made it too much about balance we'd have lost something so it it's a it it requires the gms to be thoughtful and listen to their players but that's a, a good thing i think yeah and also i, I feel practice. like yeah the like although like our characters can die and just come back there's a good chance that they will come back worse than they were before, yes! which I think yeah. is it, what I like. I like that a lot. Like, uh, we did a test roll and uh, during character creation, and Drax character straight up is Died. is a mindless zombie. If he yeah, died. If you roll a, roll a one yeah, on Halloween. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So I do love. I do love that. Like, while death isn't the end, it is still not. It still feels like it is. It is still dangerous to die. I mean, I think, yeah, I think that was something I, 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 I felt we had to do that. I mean, one, I think the hollowing from, from Dark Souls 1 is just really, really cool. And yeah. you know, the, the way it can, you know, it forces you to confront the existential questions of Dark Souls, you know, that, that kind of underpinning philosophy of what do you do when you keep dying and keep being reborn? What, you know, it, there has to be some reason not to die. And I wanted to build that in. And in the same way that in the character creation, when you've got things like your your motivations, that's because, well, if you just keep dying and getting reborn, why, why bother getting up from the bonfire in the first place? What does right. keep dragging you forward? So, I, yeah, the, I think when, when it's not a computer game, when it's not automatically done for you, if you like, uh, you have to give a little more thought, not that they haven't given thought, but you have to give a bit more thought in terms of, you know, directly telling the player certain aspects of the, what in a in a computer game is kind of inferred or implied. Um, so in this case, you know, you're going to die, but you shouldn't want to die. You shouldn't just think, oh, I'm bored now. I'll, I'll let myself die so we can go back and start again because we're in a bad position. No, there has to be there has to be some penalty for that. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise it's just it's just Groundhog's um, Day or something like that, where it's like, yeah. ah, we'll let you reset. <laughs> yeah. Which I feel like will be very exactly. hard. Yeah. Eventually, get very hard to role play, uh, especially interactions with NPCs, uh, stuff like that. I know. I thought it was perfect. I loved. I, I for some reason never um, considered that death would be like, at least in um, the Halloween through um, rolling uh, in the game in the TTRPG, that there was an option to be like, yeah, no, you roll a new character. Sorry, <laughs> you yeah. need to make a new character now. So getting that. I think definitely flip the switch for me as well because i'm as a player i was absolutely down to for the idea of being like okay well, if we're not in a good position i'll just die um and seeing that there's no there's actual risk um in this flipped exact everything that i've planned on going with for my character 
in a great way because <laughs> yeah. like i don't think it didn't take away any fun um it honestly i think it's gonna enhance it so i'm very excited about that but it I'm definitely just, was affected i'm so i've never been more excited to be like again it's this weird feeling that i haven't ever had with another game of being like oh my god this is gonna be terrifying and it's gonna be grueling but it's gonna be so fun <laughs> i can't wait to die and roll a new character i've never felt like that before in my <laughs> life with any ttrpg and so being like oh, what if i roll a one and i have to just die i'm so excited <laughs> i'm so excited what a fun table that's such a fun idea yeah i, love I, I did it. have a lot of fun right now yeah just and i love that some of them are boons i love that some yeah. of them are good I love that idea. So it could be good, could be bad. Always a gamble, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's what I was. Uh, that's what I was trying for. Was it was something? Yeah, it was was basically something that would would incentivize you to try and stay alive. But then you know sometimes things go against you, and you could still get something good out of it. You know, I like I, that. I like that weird balance. Um, it, part of it, some of it's taken. You know, there's a lot of Call of Cthulhu in there with the kind of um, yeah. you know, the permanent. Um, insanity tables etc you can mm -hmm. you know you great you gain these um these various character things and they're really good for role playing they're really good yeah. for understanding the kind of long-term effects of these things on your on your character so you know there's a couple in there that have no mechanical uh, benefit or disadvantage you just have they're just new ways to look at your character and think about what the experience of of their life is you know and it's a particularly grueling <laughs> yeah. unpleasant life that, that, I, <laughs> that I read you guys one, are putting them into i read one today i think one of the ones that stuck out to me was like like it's no you don't nothing happens to you but you were like as you died you were like you were sure this was going to be the last time you were ever killed and now you're not and you're like oh i'm back i thought this was over <sighs> yes, i think that's what makes up so much of what makes Dark Souls amazing is it's the fragmentariness of its lore, the fact that it's difficult to, you know, ever pass it or, or put it all together. It's all theories. But at the same time, I think there are lots of things that are open to question and you can put some real thought into without kind of um, detracting from the overall experience. Because what we never, ever wanted to do was was to tell people, oh, no, this is this is actually how it is or this is canon. Uh, you know i'm not gonna do anything that from software hasn't done but the experience of being born over and over and over and over again and doing the same things over and over again you know that's i mean it's one definition of madness really mm -hmm. um and i i think that that was something an rpg is particularly well suited to address and look at and and you want to incentivize characters to think about what that means. You, you know that you want players to feel comfortable and to feel compelled a little to to really think about what that you know that experience is like because that's what you know RPGs can do. They're they're a great tool for empathy. And yeah. while you know um, none of us are likely to be born again um, <laughs> by a bonfire, <laughs> what other experiences in life which are kind of similarly um, I think uh, repetitive and difficult and sometimes thinking about those and, and recognizing um, the kind of the courage it takes to keep going is is uh, is a worthwhile experience yeah because a lot of video games like characters are reborn in some way or like can't die like it's it, it it's it's not just reloading a level it's like canonical and so mm -hmm. and exploring that idea of like what it's like to to live through this life of violence and be actively killed many times over and how that changes you as a person is is fascinating i think what i also love about dark souls and then why i think i was so excited to see dark souls become a ttrpg is that idea of like, you're not the chosen one, you're a tarnished, you're part of this collective group of people also kind of all doing the same thing. And I think that's also why I love the community and like the messaging system and all of that stuff is like, you're all, it's like, we're all climbing that mountain together. And then being at a table and all of us also like, yeah, there can only be one Elden Lord or whatever you know sure but like we're all like unkindled and it i just love that sense of like 
belonging in in a group. And so I'm really excited to see that at at, uh, at a table in like a role play setting instead yeah. of it being like, oh yeah, there's there's Nelly LeFou or freaking Patches, good old Patches, those <laughs> Patches. But yeah, very, very, very pumped. I think that's, yeah, because I, I mean, you know, one of the things in Dark, in the original Dark Souls is that it's not the first time the flame's been kindled. You know, there have been others before you. Well, what does that mean? You know, what does that, what does that mean for you as a, you know, as you say, you're not, you're not a hero. You're not the chosen one. You're just one of a group of people and maybe you get lucky this time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I mean, that's a pretty good metaphor for life, really. Yeah. Um, and so trying, trying to keep some of that um in in a ttrpg was it was something i really really wanted to do and because i think as i said ttrpg really gets um really has opportunities to explore those questions in a way video games aren't quite able to do just yet i'm sure that we right. know in 10, in 10 years we'll 15 see. years the way technology <laughs> goes yeah they'll do everything the gm can um but until then ttrpgs are still great for certain things yeah i think yeah the only game I can think of that did something close was uh, Senua Soul Sacrifice, or like the the yes. just, yeah yeah it, like where as you die your character becomes more and more corrupt and like your arm gets darker and like your oh, yeah. grows and stuff Senua's, like that. Senua's yeah, yeah. Senua's uh, Sacrifice. But that's that like so yeah, so, so it's like if you fail too many times, it's over. But you know, yeah, I love I I love I think also again like taking that like okay, I'm not the only one, definitely not. Like, you romanticize everything you do, and especially when you're playing, your your character doesn't talk, but you're, like, and you may have, like, one dialogue option, or no dialogue options, but, like, you wish you could interact with these NPCs so much more. You want to ask them questions. You want to, like, just dig into it with them and so i think it is it's gonna be really cool seeing that at the table i love role playing at a table and so like even as i'm going through elden ring like thinking about like oh my god like i wish like this was my gm and i could just like talk to blind <laughs> for like five minutes like i'm so so pumped for i just keep talking about how excited i am i just am i so think pumped. it's great I love it. <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> I mean, yeah being able to interact with the NPCs, was really, there's a there's a whole section in the book which is just creating weird Dark Souls NPCs because they're so good. Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah, not being able to talk to any of them is endlessly frustrating. Yeah, because you, you just you get a minute. Just talk to them for hours. You yeah. just get a brief thing. It's like I remember Bloodborne, all those people that are just that are just behind doors and windows. And I was like, yes! no, I want to see them. Yeah. I want them. I want to see what you're doing. What is your deal? I want to know so bad. <laughs> Cause I know they're doing some Lovecraftian like ritual shit that's behind there. The thing with Dark Souls is Dark Souls they'll show you the keyhole of lore, and you know that behind that keyhole there is just so much more that maybe you'll never see unless you really uncover it. And so I think that is the thing. They're like, oh, we're only gonna feed you two lines of dialogue because, girl, you know there's more going on, but. <laughs> You're not gonna know, and so being able to dig into that like a wild animal, yeah, 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 yeah hundred percent. That's definitely <laughs> yeah. That's one of the one of the things I was most excited about when writing it. It's like oh, the stories I can tell. <laughs> I'm so excited. Awesome. Wait for that stuff. <laughs> like even patches has a little section in the in the book which I'm very excited about. Uh, so if we come across him, I'm. So, be so excited good. to just absolutely hate him. Uh, <laughs> so good. Ah, oh, it's gonna be amazing. I love. I want to just make weird Dark Souls NPCs all day for fun. That sounds I mean, like so can. much fun. And now with the book, you can. <laughs> now with the book, I can. <laughs> uh, I was. I. Uh, I guess we can get back to uh, yeah, questions. Seconds. Uh, that I. Let's see. One question I had. I was. I was curious. Was there a like a, a game mechanic or something about like Dark Souls that you were like, I I wish we could have fit this in, but it just like it didn't fit either the mechanics or aesthetics or just something about like it, it added too much complexity. So there's there's two things uh, I think to answer that question, and I'm hoping 
at some point we might get a chance to maybe maybe use them in some way. So one, I really did want to do a solo player mode because um, I, you know, a, a one one v one because there's a there's a couple of so John Hodgson's um, Beowulf game uh, from Handiwork Games for anybody who's watching hasn't heard of it is a really really good one v one five e system. So it, it can be done, and I think I think that would be both popular and really cool. So I, that's something. And then um, in a couple of early stages, we had um, some elements for, for telegraphing boss moves, for letting you know what they were going to do. Unfortunately, oh. just due to time, um, you know, with, with playtesting and, and publication dates and getting everything out, uh, we kind of that we had to cut that. Unfortunately. Um, but that is something I'm hoping we might be able to put out in one way uh, or another. Whether that happens, I don't know. But it's it's quite a cool little um, you know thing, just for little tells that you can give the player so they can start to prepare, um, you know, and and recognise what the boss is going to do because obviously that's such a big part of um, combat. It it didn't necessarily fit perfectly with 5e on the first couple of times we tried it so it needed some more work but i i think you know with a little more time we can get it and then uh, that would be uh, something again i think people would really really like that and it would also really um, i think it'd, it'd be a really good addition to just 5e combat full stop yeah. i think that kind of that kind of ability to build your tactics intuitively and in response to what's being presented to you would be really cool yeah, no, I love. I, that would honestly, yeah, definitely add to it. But I also definitely see how it would have been difficult to <laughs> to incorporate, um, ah. especially with a deadline coming up. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, like I say, I'm really, really hopeful we'll be able to to include it in because um, there there are other books coming for for Dark Souls. Uh, oh, we haven't okay. confirmed any, so I can't say what they are. But there are. Um, really, some, some really cool uh, additional things coming out. So hopefully, we'll be able to put it in one of those one day. Um, you know, with some additional. So I'm a big fan of additional rules and, and options yeah. like that to help you know keep things fresh, if nothing else. So hopefully, you'll see the light of day in one of those. Oh, how yeah. exciting! <laughs> I've never been disappointed when someone adds more rules to a game I already like. Oh yeah, yeah. everyone loves a good supplement. Yeah, that's right. I love a good class that has like six million subclasses that like people are like, oh, wait, we can make this cooler. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Have my pamphlet. I love it. I got every time like any like um, homebrew subclass or like Unearth the Kana subclass, like, any honestly, any subclass that comes out, I always mess around with it because I just love the extra additional flavor as oh, well yeah. as just abilities that it comes with. So, yeah, no, I'm eagerly waiting. For already for any additional Dark Souls uh, teacher video content. <laughs> well, that, hopefully you won't have to wait too long. But I, as I could say, I can't say anything because yes, otherwise I'll get killed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, waiting outside. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're releasing all the two e books from Dungeons and Dragons, the all the handbooks for priests and rangers and paladins, and right? just for Dark Souls. Okay, we, we have another question. Angu Capa Bear says, "Is the book based on a specific location, Lord Run, Dranglake, Lothric?" Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, Dark Souls Three was the game I knew best. It was the one we'd kind of played most in, in the office. So we went with uh, Lothric. Again, uh, if we can do more supplements, we might be able to go to other settings. Um, but um, again, I can't promise or guarantee anything either way. But that would be <laughs> something so we, would, we would love to do. Right, it's kind of load and I love it. I'm so <laughs> like, excited. Every time anything, Rob was like, yes. I yes, want I'm so proud. <laughs> it feels like my birthday. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we get to play Lothric, I'm so pumped! <laughs> oh my god. So, oh speaking god. of the, 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 the zone and, and stuff like that, I was curious, like, how... Uh, because we've talked a lot about Dark Souls having a very, like... Th the way it tells story in-game, in uh, you know, the way it reveals story or, or kind of doesn't. Uh, how, how, how you... Has that played into, like, just, like... The design of of the game it's like how you tell the story within the game how much of that like plays into actual like 
to the yeah. RPG side of it? Yeah, that's a again a very that's a very good question and quite a tricky one to answer because really unlike um, uh, oh my god <gasps> RPGs oh, they, the, the no, law in, in the book you're back am I still you're there you're, yeah yeah you're, yeah, you're, you're back. back you're back briefly dropped out I thought, I thought they got right you there. I thought um, they got you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we had uh, so it was something we discussed a lot, um, and basically it's quite a it's quite a law light law chapter. It gives you an overview of the place. It gives you the monsters you're going to fight. It gives you the treasure you might find. It gives you a boss, uh, the, or you know one or two bosses there, and the NPCs you're going to meet, and that's it. Everything else is kind of on the GM to figure out. There's no maps because you know Dark Souls doesn't give you maps. Now there are obviously brilliant fan-made maps on the wikis and stuff that you can use to orient yourself but and while i had considered including maps at one point decided that in order to keep that kind of ineffability that you don't want things to be knowable you don't want things to be able to be pinned down so easily that just getting rid of any kind of map was a really good way of doing that every time you enter lothric uh, your gm is making it up anew for you uh, it's always going to be different so that you've got that constant thrill of exploration and discovery, which I think is so, um, so important um, to, to maintain. It's, it's a mystique, isn't it? You don't, I don't, I didn't want to be the person who pulled back the curtain on Dark Souls. Not that I could, but you know, I didn't want even to give the impression that that's what I was doing. And I imagine it's like, you don't want to be like, Dark Souls, is, I think you said that, like, Dark Souls is this, you know, like, this is the lore of Dark Souls. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, and I'm sure I'm sure Bandai Namco and From Software wouldn't have let us do that anyway. But <gasps> I, I didn't want to even give them the opportunity to say, "What the hell have you done?" <laughs> Never back in door again. <laughs> I, I do have one question. Probably it's not as deep, but I, my main question is, why Dark Souls? Out of all of the IP out there, what what made you gravitate to Dark Souls? So, I mean, there's a, that, that's quite a complex, a surprisingly complex answer to that. Oh. So one, uh, obviously Steamforged had the board game license for Dark for Souls and it, you know, had done really, really well. So when I got my job, I started at Steamforged, I was like, so when are we, when are we doing the Dark Souls RPG? <laughs> why, why, are we not, why is this not the first thing we're doing? Why, why am I not writing this now? <laughs> and obviously we wanted to gradually enter the market so we had epic encounters and a couple of you know and a couple of other things um which you know have done really well animal adventures and stuff like that which meant that we wanted basically when we start when we announced something that people were would might trust that it would be a, a good game or it'd be worth investing in and not you know what we we definitely didn't want it to come across was like a, a cheap well we've done the board game now the inevitable rpg we wanted right. it to feel like its own product and that you know a lot of love and time had gone into it um, so why Dark Souls? Who wouldn't want to ride the Dark Souls? Right? <laughs> I mean, because yeah. it, it's, I, I kind of felt like it was one of the big, one of the really big IPs that really deserved or would really, I don't want to benefit sounds kind of arrogant, but that there was a lot to be explored there that a TTRPG could do really interesting things with, um, you know, because it, and because TTRPGs, you know, so much of it is homebrewed. Even if you're using like a, you know, a, you know, a Forgotten Realms or a Great Orc or another classic setting, you're always inventing when you're bringing new things to it. It always becomes your version of that setting. And I think people wanted to do that a lot with Dark Souls. Um, you know, there's so many different like fan hacks and, you know, the, the endless theories on what certain things might mean. There's so many great YouTube videos where people, you know, exploring, well, perhaps this is where demons come from, or perhaps this is what the abyss is, or et cetera, et cetera. And I think, you know, giving a TTRPG is kind of offering permission to people to, to, to make more of that and turn it into their own games, their own version of Dark Souls. So I kind of, uh, without wanting to sound too messianic, I kind of wanted to, you know, help people in that regard. Oh, that sounds, that sounds so arrogant. No, no, I love that. No, I'm like, no, I, I, I feel that because it is, there, it, 
Dark Souls feels like such an original world. Like every time you step into one of those from soft games, you're like, this is not like anything I've experienced before. I would love to play in this so much more than the game just allows you to, even though the game is is tremendous. You're like, there's like mo there's more to this. I know that there's more to this and I would love to see more of it. Yeah. Yeah. And on, quite literally, like Brava and I have key examples of literally people who are like, I want to explore more of this, please. Um, I want to play this at the table, like yeah. somehow. I, yeah. I mean, just like the aesthetic, the storytelling, the like, the mechanics. It's like a thing that, like, oh my gosh, seems like so hard to pin down because Dark Souls is so unique and set the precedent for a lot of games after it released and after it came out that like how do you even where do you even start like that's i guess a question that i'd love to ask like what how where... <laughs> yeah like what is your like when you're sitting down you're like okay now we're gonna make a dark souls what are your like design pillars like what's your, what's yeah. your thing so the basically we we started with how do we how do we make the combat feel right so that we had a version of, of position long before we decided we were going to do a 5e game um and so it it, it was kind of so how, how do you make the combat feel right how do you make the characters feel right and where's where are we going to allow people to build characters from so for instance the idea that uh you know if we were always going to have classes because obviously dark souls 3 has classes um did we want to have subclasses because they don't feel especially dark souls you're a knight you're not a you know uh, i don't know a, i can't remember any of the fighter subclasses but you're not <laughs> a specific, you're just a knight you know and yeah. then you're a warrior etc yeah. etc et so did we want subclasses and if not what could we do um the equipment is obviously so much so important there so we decided we'd kind of threshed out what the key areas where we were going to really build our system on and then after you know considerable discussions back and forth um a couple of minor arguments we decided it was going to be we we're going to do 5e but we already had these 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 pillars as you say design pillars these tenets that we were definitely going to use so then once you have that and you combine it with, with you know 5e you've actually actually more or less got a kind of core game and it becomes an iterative process rather than you know kind of starting from a blank page which is you know something sometimes very refreshing but usually just terrifying yeah <sighs> yeah because I, I i've always said like 5e is a combat miniatures game that pretends to be an rpg most of the time yeah. i i would not i would not disagree with that I, <laughs> I i i but when a lot of people have said you know why are you using 5e uh and it's like well you know dark souls is a is a combat game primarily and, yeah. and 5e is a good combat game you know yeah. and yeah you can you obviously you want to change a lot of it to make it feel more dark souls but i think you know if you've got a solid core that it does one thing particularly well D, &D is a game about killing things and taking their stuff and dark souls works in a very similar way uh and so i think it was you know once we had that understanding then you can start you know we we, we basically had a head start we could start building in the way we wanted to and in the direction we wanted to makes it very accessible yeah especially yeah. now that there's this huge renaissance of people you know friends like I'd, i'll have friends who i'd never even thought would even consider to play dungeons and dragons or like i want to get into it i want to try it where like 5e is that system that everyone knows even if they're just starting and so i think it like makes it a lot more accessible especially when you have a base that is already very intimidating to learn to have that get out of the way so that you could really jump into the game um i think, I think yeah, it's very smart that move. was definitely something we were keen to to, to draw on is, is you know how familiar 5e is now everybody understands it everybody grasps that and if you're new to rpgs you can you can pick up 5e and be playing really quickly because there's so many amazing you know actual plays out there there's so many you know live streams you can jump on and that that's a big thing when you're dealing with a license that's going to attract people who aren't you know they're not necessarily um 
experienced TTRPG players. You know, you don't want them to be put off. You want them to go, oh, I love Dark Souls computer game. Maybe this is a way into the hobby for me. And, you know, that's that's always a big thing. So, yeah, that, that familiarity, that accessibility was definitely something um, we wanted. And, and I'd be lying, I'd say, if I, you know, there's obviously a commercial aspect. Um, oh, yeah. You know, like yeah. 5e is the biggest game on the market. And, yeah. But, yeah, exactly. And you can't ignore that. Yeah. But also it's nice, it, like, for those of us who have been playing 5e since it came out, it's it, I, I love playing a system that, like, takes it and changes it not radically, but enough that I'm like, this feels different and new. And it's like, it didn't, I don't, it, I don't have to challenge myself to wrap my brain around a whole new style of combat, but it changes enough that I feel like I'm not playing 5e. Yeah, yeah. I agree. That's what we were, that's definitely, that was, that was kind of the watchword really. That's what we were doing, 5e, but not 5e. That's what we yeah. were, yeah. Always I'll, working towards. I would be honest. I was definitely one of the people like 5e, Damn it, I played so much 5e, I kind of went to something else. But then reading through it, I am a convert. Because <laughs> reading <laughs> through it, first of all, 5e is like a perfect fit. Because like you said, at the end of the day, Dark Souls is just a combat game, which is also what 5e is. And But like um, Eric said, the change you've done, because I think my biggest thing was like, I have no idea how you're going to make this Dark Souls-y, because it's so hard, at very least after like level one. It's very hard for you to die and i feel like it's, yeah. dying is a big thing in dark souls so seeing how you change that and like added position on to um tackle that problem i think honestly now this version i suppose of 5e is perfect for dark yeah. souls that's why i'm Thank extremely you so excited yeah so. like i was as i was reading it i was like i mean this doesn't even have to be dark souls i could use this for other things too yeah, yeah i have I so many ideas <laughs> Position is so smart because again, it just like takes in. You can have so much HP and just be a tank, and that's how you go about combat. Is like based off of how much HP you have. Doesn't even matter your AC. If you know you can get hit a bunch, you're gonna play a certain way. And I have so, 240 this... hit points, and I'm raging, so I take half damage. So exactly. I don't even have to try. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and so having that position, I just I love it. It just like. It almost just feels like that, like, one perfect puzzle piece, like, in a big picture of, like, not perfecting, but, like, refining, like, combat. I love it. Awesome. I'm glad. Well, I, I hope you guys still love it after you've, after you've really <laughs> on the table. Um, I mean, we might end up crying because our characters yeah. died over We'll let you know. But we'll, I think we enjoy the experience of it. We'll be very you know vocal. What? Yeah. If we don't like yeah, it. Yeah, you'll know. <laughs> God, that's only with thread. <laughs> uh, we have a it's question. That, Go ahead. I was just gonna say it's that beautiful frustration of where you stand up so hard, your chair goes flying back after you know six hours of trying to beat freaking Smog the, for the six million time. But you're like, all right, I'm gonna sit back in this chair and I'm gonna be here for another hour because boy, do I love this. It's just that perfect feeling. Mm. <laughs> We've got uh, one more question from chat. We're going to wrap it up here pretty soon. Uh, DJ Regular asks, do you have any stories from playtesting that actually sound like some of the wilder videos you've seen from people's FromSoft game playthroughs? Um, I mean, I've seen a whole party be um, wiped out by uh, Yorm the Giant in the round. Oh, <laughs> they were pretty, they were really rugged. They were all like 12th or 13th level. And he went through them like paper. It was absolutely. Cool. <laughs> that um, sounds very Dark Souls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. And they did. I didn't even spend um, a position to hit. He just he rolled. He rolled like three crits. It was. It was absolutely. It was horrendous. Oh, but it was. It was horrifying. Oh, um, I love RNG. Absolute paper. Oh my god. Every time my character dies, I'm gonna blame camera angles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Like, I'm not locking on. Why am I not locking on? Like, Why am I not auto locking? What the heck? <laughs> you glitched. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely hit. The hitboxes in this is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> there, there was definitely lag because I was rolling. So I had an invulnerability frame right there. I had, yeah. Yeah. I keep auto locking onto the deer over there, like six feet away. Yes. <laughs> uh, I. 
<clears throat> I want to say thank you to Richard for for joining us uh, for this. <clears throat> this is the voice of Don, by the way, for the people in the <laughs> chat who are like, who is that? I'm the voice of the bonfire you, you know, see on your screen right now. Voice or is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us, Richard, and, and taking time, uh, to, to be here. And, uh, any other questions from our, our three cast members who are here? We basically covered, we covered all I have, things. I actually wrote stuff down. I have one question. <laughs> I have one question. It's not related to the TTRPG. Um, who's your favorite Dark Souls NPC? Oh well, I mean, I've I've mentioned him already. Yom the giant every time. Oh yeah, but the weird, the about... weird honor and dignity and tragedy of his story, and then uh, and, and Sigurd not quite making it to to say sorry and you know to to, yeah. to fulfill his oath. And ah! oh, that's so beautiful and so so heartrending. Good choice. And also, choice. he's an absolute bastard to beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. You know, that's a good answer. I like that answer. Yeah, that's my that's my final question. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks for thanks for having me and everybody's patience with the appalling internet. Aww. Oh, we okay. we all understand. We've we've all had to live through this for so long. We yeah. understand how this works. Uh, but thank you for for showing up, and uh, thank you to to all the the wonderful folks uh, watching this live or uh, later on watching it up on on YouTube. If you happen to be watching on that, uh, we got a whole bunch of other stuff on the YouTube as well. If you want to check any of that stuff out, tons of different actual plays and, 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 uh, exploration societies and all kinds of stuff. You definitely find something that you like down there and feel free to hit like, and subscribe. Uh, you can join the exploration society on uh, coffee or join the discord. If you just want to talk shop and hang out and, uh, talk, talk to us and talk about this episode or any of the other, episodes but yeah uh i guess we can go around and everyone can and just tell people uh just a quick uh where they might find you on the socials and all that stuff we'll start with you richard obviously oh i'm i'm uh, on twitter at rpg august i can be found on facebook and i'm currently a gary con i, I didn't do run in my games today because i've been uh, quite ill but i will be there for the rest of the, the weekend hopefully um, so if you're there please do come and say hi Oh, and at Steamforged LTD. Yeah. <laughs> they are the company, and you can be found there. And I definitely did not forget again. <laughs> not even under the wire. Drek, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Draconix. That's D R A K O N I Q U E S. I kind of stream all over the place. But um, the thing that I'm very excited about is that tomorrow you can find me on Q Times at 6 p.m. Pacific with the return of Parliament of Owls, which is our old villain Pathfinder second edition campaign. Um, this is going to be a ton of fun being evil again. Um, you know, meet my horrible, horrible little vampire man, um, Imra. Um, and we've been promised godhood, so that's going to be cool. Villains of godhood. So, yeah, I don't think you want to miss miss out on that. <laughs> oh. Bravo. Hi, guys. I'm Bravo. Uh, you can find me over at uh, Bravo with five R's, B R R R R R A V O. Sorry about that. Um, uh, on Twitter and Instagram, um, that's where I keep all of my freelance art and fantasy illustration. They all live there. Um, as well, I live over at the Money Hall. That's me and Chat. Oh, that's my channel. Uh, we do TTRPG uh, map making. NPC Lab will make an NPC for you to use. You want Sonic the Hedgehog in your game? We did it for you. you put it in there. <laughs> it's yours. Um, on top of that, uh, we're going to be having our homebrew start coming back. And um, now that I have uh, relatively recovered from my concussion, um, production for Spill the TTRPG, my podcast, is going to get back rolling. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, on Fridays, uh, you can find me over at Stella Luna's channel. Uh, sometimes Drac joins me for that one. We play yeah. Unbound, uh, Uncaged Anthology good stuff uh yeah thank you so much yeah uh and uh you can find me mostly eric on uh, most social media platforms at, under that name and uh new episodes of new pantheon academia return here to saving throw show our our uh anime inspired ttrpg uh may 1st i believe is when we come back for the second half of this next season you find out what those crazy god kids are doing <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's that'll wrap us all up here for the Dark Souls Q and A. Thank you once again, Richard, for uh, for showing up and and answering all of our our nagging questions and putting up with our with our stuff. Uh, and uh, th thank you all you at home who watched this. Uh, hopefully you you got some good information out of this and got excited for this very wonderful RPG that we are going to start playing very soon here on this channel on Thursdays. Uh, you can check us out next Thursday at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, where we do the second half of our character creation and maybe a little bit of role plays we, we get in and start actually playing this game. Uh, but until yeah. then, I, 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 you should all have a wonderful rest of your night, and we will see you some other time. Goodbye, everybody.